Season finale. NFTs. Season finale. NFTs. In last week's episode, the fans got to choose which fan created artwork yeah. would get turned into Tiger Belly's first legendary NFT. Ooh. Everyone voted, the votes are in, and we have a winner. Yeah, this is the new, the chosen one. Tiger Belly NFT, it's a legendary card, and you gotta buy it. And, and the bidding starts here. Congratulations to. Congratulations to user Giovanni. <laughs> Title. Oddly enough, it was a dream. I love that title. Oddly with a L-E-E -E in honor of Bobby Lee. And guys, make sure you bid on this. You can go to legacy.shop and uh, check out the NFT. Basically, there's going to be two. You get the first serial number one. The other one will be here that Bobby will own. It'll be on our wall. You'll also get a signed copy from us that will be mailed to you. So make sure you bid on it right now. And guess what? The artist will also get half the proceeds. So check it out, guys. Link in the description. Ooh. So cool. How's my... Uh Mike, good. Check one, two. <laughs> Fantastic. So, uh, Matt, don't, don't say anything until I bring your name up. <laughs> okay. You want to use the uh, uh, earphone piece? You don't have to. You don't have to. It feels natural not to. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. You get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, when are you? Uh, let's start. To everything, turn, turn, and turn to all the seasons. It's my favorite Vietnam War kind of song. Like, I can visualize me mm. in the shrubs. You know what I mean? Yeah. But on the other side, not on the American side. Oh, gotcha. But with that song, maybe there's an Asian version of that song. How would that go? To everything, mm. turn, turn, right? And I'm going, but you know, Get on the Ho Chi, you know, right? The Ho Chi yeah, yeah. Trail? Yeah, yeah. Right? right? Ho Chi, Ho Chi. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, Ho Chi Man was an actual guy, right? But he was old, so he's probably not there. Anyway, the song would be in my... Anyway, the song would be in my head. The song would be in my head. And I just have these um, fantasies about it. But, um, yeah. you know, I am an American through and through. And that's um, blasphemy, what I just said. Okay? And <laughs> exactly. it, it is. I'm an American through and through. That's the lesson. It's, yeah. it, the lesson is that. And... Um, <laughs> But in my fantasy, we did win the war. Mm. The Vietnamese? The Vietnamese did, right? Okay. Didn't they win it? The, I don't know. Yeah. I saw the Ken Burns documentary <laughs> years ago, and I thought they won. But anyway, um, but it was a good war. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, was, it wasn't boring. It wasn't boring. No, there was a lot of good things. But let's move on. <laughs> yeah. Some of the photographs were insane. Crazy. Right? Remember the girl with the... <laughs> Or, or oh that girl God. wasn't. Yeah, that's. Yeah, that's, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. My my bad, John. John, he's high right now. John, that wasn't that. F <laughs> not, yet, not, yet, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. You have to sit through. Yeah, this. and then there was just. What well, can I just do? One more photograph. Well, let me do what Esther does. The views expressed on this show <laughs> yeah, do not yeah. reflect yeah, yeah, yeah. mine at all. There was or one fucked up one where remember that one. So anyway, let's move on. Um, John, I know you're high. So um. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Tiger Belly. Um, I've got a guy on today. At, well, let's introduce everyone in the room why not, before we even get to our guest. That'd be nice, mm -hmm. right? We've got um, Gilbert, right? Yeah. Yeah, good friend, old friend. You've been a part of this podcast for how long? Since the beginning. Since the beginning. Before That's George, right. Before George. Before George. So you were one of the OGs. Us three, yeah. Yeah, so thank you so much for showing up every week and doing your thing. We've got this fucking... Hi, Ching Chong over here. This a Ching this Chong. Hi, Ching Chong. A Ching Chong. Yeah, welcome back, dude. Where were you? I was, uh, you know, at home raising kids. That's <laughs> a good excuse. Down, That's a really good excuse. You weren't in Michigan. I was in Michigan uh, a couple months ago shooting a doc. The documentary. That's right. Okay. We've got George. You know what I mean? Welcome back. You're the boss. He didn't go anywhere. <laughs> he's been here the whole time. <laughs> I know he's been here. All right. Sorry. I, oh. I just had acai bowls in my lungs. Oh, As yeah. That's called that's called aspiration. Acid reflux. Aspiration, and now you're gonna have aspiration pneumonia. Anyway, we got sorry, babe. <laughs> we got Kalila, my girlfriend, and uh, second in command. So I'm gonna tell you some stories about this next guy. This next guy. <laughs> so long. Sorry. So um, you know, obviously I knew this guy's name, but like I wouldn't like I when I was on a show called Animal Practice. He did some of the table reads, right? He, and 
I think Problem Child, when we did that, and then, um, so he would be at network table reads, I would see him there. I did a movie called, I had one, two lines in a movie called um, Keeping Up With The Joneses, mm. and he had a big part in that. I saw him in, I forgot, Atlanta or Georgia, somewhere, right? Um, he's also on the TV sh- program Veep, and he's been nominated for an Emmy. I think this is the first a- person we've ever even been on this program that's been nominated for an Emmy. Who? So. Emmy. Eric, Eric Stone Street. One from Modern Family. That's right. right. <laughs> but he's the second. Just tell me it's the second. He's the second. Thank you. He's the second, he's right? Second. But, he, <laughs> <laughs> but most importantly, everything's important. Yeah. He also is one of the co founder founders of Use Upright Citizens Brigade, mm-hmm. right? Which is what's so funny, John? Because I said it wrong. Yeah, it was just the way I'll do. It. Can I say it again? Then yeah. he was one of the founders of Upright Citizens. <laughs> what's, what's the name? Of the group? Upright yeah. Citizens Brigade (UCB) is what we. Yeah, that's what it is. Okay, and with um, those guys, <laughs> <laughs> give him a round of applause, Matt Walsh. Everybody, Woo! clap your hands. Matt Walsh, you can. <laughs> yeah. All right, I was instructed to hang back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for having me. That was a pretty good intro. Thank you, man. Well, did I, get I feel like wrong? also you've done my podcast. I think I, I had a podcast where we would bring people on to do bits in the sports world called Bear Down or no, Sports I did a, and Leisure. No, it was one where I had to improvise a yeah. character. Is that yes. what that is? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you probably had no idea. Scott Armstrong asked you to do it, maybe? Yeah. Yes. And I showed up. Well, of course, if Scotty and you are going to be involved, I'm going to do it. Uh, I felt like I was being, I was drowning on it, though. Did I drown on it? No, you were good. Thank you. You were good. That's all I wanted to hear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because it's, that's it right there. Wow, good research. Hey, who did that's that? That's good research, oh, man. Thank you so much, Matt Walsh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can we curse on this show? Yeah. Yeah, you can. You can say whatever you fucking, fucking. Fucking good work, man. <laughs> yeah, dude. Fuck That's yeah. respect. This guy's it's old fucking school. good. Yeah, well so, done. So, um, Scotty was a guy. Because there was a time in my career where I had gotten nothing, mm. right? And Scott, though, every other couple of years is a guy that would always hire me. He was like one of those guys. So I just love that guy a lot. Give him a round of applause, Scott Armstrong, everybody. <laughs> um, he's a, is, your, is he one of your best friends or what? He is one of my best yeah, friends. Yeah, yeah. He's a great guy, right? Yeah. We yeah, just he, went to Vegas this weekend to go see a Bears game. What is it? What's a bear? A Chicago Bear is an NFL football team. <laughs> is it good? Justin Fields. They're good. They won. They're three and two. Justin Fields, Fields. big draft pick. Yeah. Young quarterback. Exciting. They won. And you know who was still coaching two days ago who? in the NFL? Who? John Gruden. Oh, no longer. Oh, that's right. He oh. stepped down. Yeah, he resigned. He stepped down. Johnny yeah. Grudem, grew, huh? Yeah. yeah. Grudem, right? Stuff. From the Bears, right? No, the not Raiders. from the Bears. Oh, the Raiders. Raiders. From the Raiders, dude. He Raiders fucking ball. left. Right. Yeah, was he good? Do you hate sports? Do you hate sports or you just don't care about them? Listen, when they say derogatory remarks, like did they specify what he said? I think they were insinuating that it was racist the way he described people and probably homophobic and sexist, I think, are the sort of emails that are out there. That's what I heard. I heard on one NPR story, so mm-hmm. I can't be a definitive source. I'll say that. What is a homophobic e- email that you could maybe email somebody that would be construed as homophobic why don't you try yeah i'll, I'll give it a go explain to us how he got fired <laughs> uh-huh. dear commission like i'm the guy right you're a you're, co- you're a coach you're a coach i'm yeah. gruesome right <laughs> what's his name gruden john gruden sorry it's sorry right, right. sorry matt no i'm helping you oh, i'm throwing you a life raft <laughs> here i'm helping all right, you all right, all right, sorry, i'm giving man. you details gruesome. so you can right. take off all right this guy's like a tough-nosed commentator in the nfl he does a lot of television. He's a very good quarterbacks analyst. Yeah. So, but he's kind of like Chucky. He looks like the Chucky doll. Mm. Oh, it's so a big head. And that's what he's known. Big head and blonde hair, kind of. Oh. And he's kind of known as Chucky. Chucky. And, and he's sort, sort of like, you know, tough as nails. He chews gum. He's, he just do the thing. Oh, right. That's, oh. that's the kind of guy he is. And he was a good coach. And you know the minute you say something like that, you're going to go because you have to go. So I agree with the thing he did by stepping down, by the way. Anyway, so that's a lot of But his name is Gruden. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. What's my first name? Tom. John. 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 Oh, John Gruden. That's all. You. You don't have to tell me again. John Gruden. Okay. Dear Commission, is that what he would say? Yeah. Dear, a. I have a big head, right? Yeah. Yeah, you're Chucky. Yeah, I'm yeah. Chuck. that's what you look like. You don't need hey! help in that department. What? Don't give me the photo. That fucks me up. It does. Yeah, yeah, does yeah, it? yeah, 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 yeah. You don't yeah. work that way. I you work from the inside work. out. You work from the inside out. You're a real actor. <laughs> 
yeah, yeah. Don't give me this you physical be... surface yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, Come yeah, on, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to go inside. I okay, know the sorry, character, sorry, right? Go ahead. John Gruden, baby. Big head. <laughs> what? Yo, yo deal, deal commission. Oh, okay. Right? B- close? Deal commission, right? You're feeling it. I can yeah, feel my, it. My, you're yeah, feeling yeah, it. I yeah, like it. Yeah. My, <laughs> my, team, my team is a bunch of pansies. Ooh, little underwear, female underwear wearing bra strap and pansies, mm-hmm. right? And they got to stick their <laughs> with feminine products inside their vagus just to even get out there <laughs> to, play, <laughs> to play the game, you know what I mean? <laughs> right? This is good. These, Keep going. these fucking little fucking, you know, I'm not going to say homo, homos, right? <laughs> because, not- I know, because of the culture, you know what I mean? You don't even that, have to that. do the keyboard if you don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> but I like it. I like it. I like oh, it. Don't they have- don't they have a voice thing yeah, where they, they can voice. translate? Or he's got a guy he yells at who says, write this down, <laughs> dummy. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know what I mean? You little uh, pansy walking, you know what I mean? Screw head. Yeah. Uh, was that, well, I, don't, I don't even know what that means. I've never said that before. But my point is, is that you're welcome, John Gruden. Oh, good. <laughs> good? Is good. it good? Yeah. Great improv. Am I, am I dead on? I feel like you should, someone should actually transcribe this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. John Gruden. In letter form. So, no, um, I'll answer your question, Matt. Um, I am a sports person, but only specific sports, and football is not one. What are your sports? This, I am only one sport oh. and only one team, and that's Arsenal FC, mm. Premier League. I love wow. Arsenal FC. Where are they right now? North they, London. No, I know where their team. I mean, on the general. table. <laughs> in the league, is the on league the active now? I don't they follow. Are, they are active. Where are they in the standings? Not good. They're, they're not good. They're okay. in the mid. They're in the mid table. They're like tenth. But um, we did have a three game winning streak, and then the last game we tied. But we're still tenth or something. But we're not going to get relegated. But um, it's it's not the heyday, you know. No. Back, yeah, but it's it's heartbreaking because I was never. Sorry, another um, acai burp. How many bowls did you have? (laughs) (laughs) That's the second bowl. Wow. (laughs) You know what? He buys two bowls a day every single day of his life. It's delicious. Yeah, it's delicious. I can't disagree with the deliciousness. Yeah. Um, What do you get in yours? I would go gun to my head, blueberry, (laughs) blueberries, coconut. Yeah, maybe Ooh. some walnuts, and then if I'm being dangerous, like some Captain Crunch or something like that. Wow! Oh. Wow! All right. You know what yes. I mean? Yeah, I'll tell you what I do, babe. Treat it like some soft serve. I I think that peanut butter ruins it. Oh, I disagree, and maybe I disagree. Thank, thank you so much, I dude. I disagree with you. That not really, a pair for me. I'm on team peanut butter. Yeah, me. I'm on team peanut butter as well. And you're can wrong. We get the t-shirts that- made, please. How soon can we get those <laughs> t-shirts made? <laughs> uh, <we'll put> <laughs> Team peanut butter. <laughs> Acai. Yeah, yeah. Team Type in team, team peanut butter. See if yeah. anything comes up. I'm sure planters or somebody. Like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jiffy. But t- peanut butter is essential to it because she grew up in the Philippines. So they didn't have peanut butter there? Well, I mean, there's a whole dish with peanut butter in it. Like <laughs> when my aunts would come travel from Germany, they would bring Nutella. Which was as close to peanut. They do have peanut butter now, but when I was growing up, it's just not something that we ate. Right. So when you're not used to it, like you probably as a um, what do they call it? A the PB and J. No, just let me finish. Okay. <laughs> let me stop. Everyone, back up. All right, for a second. Right. Uh oh. I got it now. Comfort food. Mm. Right. And Matt and Matt and I grew up in America. Why? Right? Why this? Right. Because I just like to put American quotes. Oh. You're right. My comfort food is like a pig knuckle stew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And <laughs> <laughs> what is yeah. that response? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you're making a point with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and Matt and I, like, we, that, you know, if we want to feel comforted mm-hmm. right, on a rainy day, maybe there was a loss in the family. Oh, wow. And we're hungo, right? Matt and I might turn to a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Or chicken noodle Don't soup. Don't speak for the man. Mm. What would No, that's very food? nostalgic for me. That's like a young, I'm one of seven. Whoa. So we ate a lot of peanut butter and jelly. And I just heard the other day an expert said it's supposed to be 59% uh, peanut butter and then the rest jelly. Is that the egg? Wow. Perfect. One ratio. person claiming they're an expert, which could be, you know, you could tell that person to go fuck themselves. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make it how I want to make it. Yeah, but, but generally it is probably true. Are you heavy on the jelly or heavy on the peanut I'm butter? I'm peanut butter heavy. Peanut butter heavy. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, you can't go more. You can't ever go more jolly for me. Yeah, me either. You can't. Go, you can't cross that line. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if it was, yeah, you can. I mean, if it was eighty percent, you cross fifty jelly, I'm walking away from that sandwich. Honest to God, I'm walking away from that sandwich. Yeah. If you cross fifty percent jelly, you're gone. I'm, well, I'm offended. What's another comfort food that you have? Comfort food. I got into making sourdough during the pandemic. Whoa. I got pretty good at it. I had a dough that was given to me a guy, by a guy named Tom Papa. Love the Papa. Uh, yeah, a lovely guy. And lovely guy. shared his uh, mother yeast that he's As had. For a starter, you want to get into baking. Oh, yeah, that's true. This is you want to know the name? I'll give you some. I'll do it. We got to stay in touch. I'll give you a uh, starter. Yeah, you, that's what you need, a starter. Okay, so let me ask you something, okay? I was watching Secession last night for the first time. <gasps> Okay, I won't say anything. I like that show. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't seen it though. But he loves it. I I haven't seen any. I've seen the you know I'm up to date up until. No, I, I I this he is the just started. I just started. Oh, you're just starting. So okay. the, I just saw the. Didn't first, the new one just come out? Yeah, yes. I did. Yeah. Okay, so I saw I the first you'd... first season first. I never even know knew what it was. Okay. And my friend Gene last night was like, "You gotta watch it." So I started with season one. So you're caught up to that, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I'm caught up. Yeah, so the old man, I don't know his name. I forgot his name. What's his Brian name? Brian Cox? The actor? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, Brian Cox's character, right? He's, it's his birthday, and one of his sons, or maybe his son-in-laws, gives him a sourdough starter kit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, it, yeah, 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 yeah. So what, is it, is it a, so if I, what does it look like, the starter kit? What starter dough looks like is like thinish, but more like taffy-ish as well to describe the texture, pancake dough in a way. But it's like a living yeast that you keep alive. Your job is to keep it alive. Wow. And then if it gets, you know, uh, where you haven't given it food, you give it food as flour and water. So you give it flour and water as much as you remember to, like every two weeks if you're good or every three weeks. Because it kind of can't die if you keep it in the refrigerator and you just drain off the water. Let's say you say you neglected it for three and a half weeks. Yeah. And you didn't think about your dough that's living in your jar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's like a chia pet kind of. You just got to keep it alive. You know what I mean? Yeah. So how that's you know, what you're doing. And I then, didn't know if it's alive. Because yeah. you'll you'll know how it responds. So what you do is whenever you feed it, you'll give it, you'll get a digital scale. Do you have a digital scale? Oh, I have many. Yeah. <laughs> do you have many? I don't know why I have none. Oh, yeah. You'll have to get a <laughs> I don't You'll know have to get a. I never had one either. You yeah, have to yeah. get a digital scale, and you go like. Can I ask you just real quick? Yeah. What's the best digital scale scale in the market? I went to a great restaurant shop in downtown LA. Just go to like down, it was near Chinatown. It was kind of Glendale, but northeast of that, maybe yeah. west. It was kind of no man's land. Uh huh. East of the five is all I can tell you. Yeah. Somewhere in there. But. Above the 110, right around there. <laughs> yes. I don't know. Now I'm trying to think of the yeah, goddamn yeah. location. Of I'll find. I'll Google it. It's so. like a restaurant uh, where you can get like crates of china and you can get like big uh, forks and stuff. Oh, like that. I see. And like weird mixers mm. and like, but it's all been used. Mm. And so it's like a cook's heaven if you're a cook at a restaurant. Right. So it was one of those places. Okay. So I get a digital scale, and then what happens? Or you could maybe get it at Target. <laughs> It also works yeah. too. <laughs> or I could just go, probably Amazon has it. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I'll Amazon it All right. if I ever need a fucking yeah. digital scale. Okay. Well, do, do you think for a first time baker that um, sourdough is the way to go? Shouldn't he start with like a soda bread? Mm, I see what you're saying. Something just really <sighs> simple. Because so he doesn't rude. even know how to cook rice. It's so fucking rude what you're doing. But he has big aspirations you look at to me right become now? Well, a baking king. He. I, I'm going to say go right to the sourdough. Okay. Because. Okay. So I love this fucking guy, man. This dude is a fuck. <laughs> Let me say something right now. Can Three I have another water? Yeah, yeah get him another good. one. Yeah. Is, get him another one. Why, is this, why isn't it happening faster, Bobby? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get him. Thank you. You're the best. Yeah. George? Yep. Yeah. I'm terrible at names. Have one in your fucking hand next time, all right? <laughs> So I three times I like how you run this show. Three now. times you, yeah, thank so you. aggressive. You have you have come to my defense two or three times already yeah. mm -hmm. in I'm a this guest. podcast. No, but you've like naysayed other people and went along with my thing. 
And I really appreciate that. And I think that's like a, a comedy rapport thing. Yes. I think that yeah, we respect a, each other on that level and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And I think I really enjoy it. I feel it. So thank you so much. Sourdough, please move on. <laughs> okay. So let's what move else? on. No, no, oh. I want to. <laughs> I mean, continue. Continue. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Helix Sleep Sleep Mattresses for your back. Oh. And your whole body. And your whole body. It depends on how you sleep, folks. I'm a side sleeper. All right, then your side. Anyway, <laughs> you guys, I love you. I love you. Aw. You guys, <laughs> so nice. So um, years ago, my brother um, was sleeping like um, an animal. Kalila did a great gesture. She gave him a Helix sleep mattress, wow. and now he sleeps 20 hours a day. Every day he calls Every us. day. And he's like, thank you so much. Thank you so much for the Helix Sleep Max. Helix Sleep. This is what you do. You take a quiz that takes just two minutes to complete, and it matches your body type and sleep prefer- preferences. The perfect mattress for you. Mm. Why would you buy a mattress made for someone else, man? That's so stupid. Stupid. With Helix, you're getting a mattress that you know will be perfect for the way you sleep. Everybody is unique, and Helix knows that. So they have several different mattress models to choose from. They have soft, medium, and firm mattresses. Mattresses great for cooling, Ugh, which is mm. what I love because I run hot like a furnace when I sleep. Yeah, it's like sleep with a bear. <laughs> and even a Helix Plus mattress for plus-size folks. Yeah, I took the Helix quiz, <laughs> and I was matched with Midnight Mattress because I wanted something that felt medium and it slept on my side so if you're looking for a mattress you take the quiz you order the mattress that you're matched to and the mattress comes right to your door shipped for free you don't ever need to go to a mattress store again because my god what a chore that is yeah helix is awesome but you don't need to take our word for it helix was awarded the number one best overall mattress pick of 2020 by gq and wired magazine just go to helixsleep.com slash belly take their two minute sleep quiz and they'll match you to a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life they have a 10-year warranty and you get to try it for a hundred nights risk free they'll even pick it up for you if you don't love it but you will. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash belly. Brooklinen, mm. the greatest stuff <laughs> you'll ever love. Aww. You guys, Brooklinen is sheets and loungewear that we use in the house. And towels and robes. I wasn't done. Okay. <laughs> and towels and what? Robes. 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 They have these waffle robes that I'm so obsessed with. I'm Nucci. I changed the name. <laughs> you guys, Brooklinen is what we use because we're princes and princesses that live in this house. It's the greatest quality fabrics. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? This loungewear has classic, classic cuts and no zippers for limitless comfort that you can pull off in real life so you can luxuriate in coziness all day, every day. That is really, truly a question of mine. It's like, if you're going to lounge at home, why would I need a cold zipper pressed up against ah. my body? This is what Brooklyn and absolutely gets right. Yeah. Brooklyn and offers bundle deals on loungewear so you can get more comfort for less money. And if you're looking for more ways to enhance your comfort, check out Brooklyn and candles. I'm a candle freak. Ooh. So I have a, tons of those. Um, eye masks and accessories to properly celebrate your chill, babe. I love chilling, man. So go on and get comfortable and get it for less at Brooklinen. Go to brooklinen.com and use the promo code TIGER to get $20 off with a minimum purchase of $100. That's brooklinen, B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com and enter promo code TIGER for $20 off with a minimum purchase of $100. That's brooklinen.com, promo code TIGER. So basically, <laughs> you would take like the sourdough's good because it's like a chore in a good way. So you take two tablespoons of the living sourdough called the whatever, and you put it in a bowl. You lost him at the word chore. He doesn't do them. Okay, that's fucking rude again. <laughs> I mean, and if you say one more rude thing, I swear to God, that's not rude. rude. That, I don't find that rude. Chore. You're right. He I, recoiled. I think, he physically recoiled. I, 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 rec- I, rec- I don't like the word chore. <laughs> Can you use a different word? Okay, please. Uh, a ritual in the best oh, way. Oh, you like oh, that. I love that. He does love in that. In the best way. He does. <laughs> yeah, I love him. It's like a meditative. It yeah. can be a meditative ritual because you're taking you're, care of a little thing. Yeah. You are taking care We're of it. Same, we're on the same wavelength here, baby. Yeah, that's why it could be a way into baking. Like, it, it's a whole different uh-huh. way in. I mean, I mean that. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, please continue. So, you would get 
it, you would get a recipe which you could just basically it would be like 200 grams of water, mm. 200 grams of flour, room temp water. Try to keep your sourdough, you know, out for a minute or two, and then you put two tablespoons in the thing. Yeah. Then you mix the flour water first. Then you put the the mother dough in there. Then you just leave it out and you cover it. You leave it out and then you come back in like two or three hours and it'll double. It'll be like this bigger, gloopier thing. The mother dough is a starter. What? (laughs) The mother dough. In case. Have I lost everyone? No. No, no. I'm I'm following. I'm following. I'm following. Babe, babe. Yeah. What the fuck are you doing? Well, I I saw your (laughs) eyes. Like, you look confused. The fuck? What is the mother dough? It's the starter. Because I just said so, but you look. I know. Could you repeat everything he said thus far? No, I don't. I refuse. To, <laughs> I refuse. Tell to. me. Tell what? Me, to ex- what did he just say? <laughs> Are you really going to learn this? Because this is important. I, no, I you don't have to down. learn it. I got to write it down. You got to write it down. I, I, Someone will email right. you. Yeah. So you bring it out, right? Yeah, you got to right. feed the fucker, right? Yeah. yeah. Feed the fucker. There, there you go. go. Feed the fucker, yeah, right? The fucker right. You put it out, right? Yeah. And you feed it water and you And eat. it? And what happens to it when you feed it? What? It doubles in size. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. You Two or three hours, leave it out. Maybe it, like five or six, but check on it, whatever. You three, man. Well, uh, you'll get numbers. Like, all right, this all is all like... All right, right. Because here's the thing. It's like this weird... You're kind of like... You're just keeping this spongy thing alive. Right. And then you're baking with it. So it's ultimately the sponge that's living, this yeast, needs flour and water every oh. three, six weeks. I don't know. I have a question. Got it? Can I have a question? <laughs> can you can <laughs> can have a question? Can I have a question? Can yes. I throw in a question? First off, yes, you can have a can, you can have one question <laughs> the rest of the show. Okay, okay. No. <laughs> can I have a couple more? Yeah. I, I want a couple more for later. <laughs> but anyway, so my a question is this. Are you doing all this? This is taking now. We're talking about yeah. months. You're well, no, 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 no. It's not months. A month. If I gave you no, no, two weeks. No. Listen. Who listens to the show? Is anyone interested besides <laughs> you and I? And no, us? everyone's listening. Yeah. This is great content. <laughs> Number one, this is great content. We've never talked about but this before. We've had chefs. And we've never. We've talked had chefs, about chefs, and we never talked about this. Is very interesting to me, and I want to do it. Great. Yeah, Roy Choi had a whole episode on starter yeast. And even he didn't talk about it. True. So yes, please proceed. Please talk about this. Well, I'm an amateur sourdough baker, okay. and I'm simplifying it for someone who's interested. <laughs> Simplify. You know, I am because I, it's I, like, I just want to say I'm not I, saying I, it in I, a bad way. I can read it between the lines, right? And I know what you meant by that, right? Yeah. And what you're saying is that we're dum dums. No. That's what you're saying, and I th- I find that to be a little rude. I find it to be a little rude. I'm a, I respect you. Everyone's accusing you to repeat it. Everyone in this room <laughs> has basically said you're not even understanding what he's saying. Right. So I'm just okay, <laughs> connecting right. to that. <laughs> all right, okay. All right. So how long? So you're doing all this for two weeks? No, well, not even. Yeah. All right. Okay. Start, right. start from the beginning. Start from the beginning. <laughs> Okay. All right. Why are you leading forward? Because this is like going to help I'll me. Go. This is going to help me be better. All right, all right. All right. I'll be more focused. Hey, watch this. Okay. So you're going to get a sponge, which is a sourdough. You'll take like two tablespoons, set it aside for a minute. We'll just set it aside. Okay. Flour, water, 200 grams, 200 grams. Okay. The numbers don't matter. They're equal. They just have to be equal. Okay. Because okay. if you add more, then you're going to have to make like two loaves or three loaves. You know what I mean? So 200 grams, 200 grams, something okay. like that. Okay. I don't have the numbers. Then you mix them all together. You put the mama yeast in there. So, okay, that's the living thing. Sure. Then it grows. You put it aside out of the, up high in a cool place. Mm. It grows. Mm. Then you take the active thing that that thing is. And meanwhile, you put your jar that you got your tablespoon from or whatever, put it in the fridge. That's the thing that keeps living. Okay. Okay? That's the thing that keeps yeah, living. Yeah, yeah, that's your, And that's then you're your... done. Now you're baking. Now you're baking. Now you're baking. So now you got that live yolk, I see what you're saying. that live yeast. What you're saying is this. Wait, hold on. Let let, let finish. <laughs> <laughs> you lean forward for you. I, oh, I know. I hold on. Right, I oh, want to. Sorry, sorry. You're right. <laughs> no, because it's a lot of information. But can I just make a point real quick before I guess, you? Are you also yes. adult adult ADHD. I know. I do. I do. I do. So, okay. Okay. I was a little confused, but what you, basically what you're saying is is that. You take little chunks of the mother dough, the, the main source yes, in there, right? Yes, that is the living thing. Right? And you can take a little chunk out there to make bread, uh-huh. sourdough bread, mm-hmm. but you have some left in the fridge for, right. later, for later. Later on, you just keep it alive. Or to share with friends, even. <laughs> <laughs> you keep it alive. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. 
So, th- so I'll, I'll, I, because all I, I, what I was thinking is, is that the mother bread, the one in the house, in the the host. Mm-hmm. That's just, I, I, I can do it more like in an alien kind of a the thing, host, yeah, right. So let's go to Aliens Two, the part, the movie. Okay. Well, you'll get to name it. Like that, that's the corny thing. You can name your mother. I named mine Dovid Nineteen. Oh, <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah, Butter, right. Yeah, it was doe? during that. What? what would you name your mother, Dove? Um, take your time. The bars, this- bars, <laughs> as in SARS. Because he used. <laughs> no. Oh, you're gonna go with disease? I don't know. No, you don't have to. Yes, a car. No, no car. <laughs> start. Anyway, I'm gonna veto that one. You know, I'll give I'm veto. I'm gonna say like yeah. Ricky or something. Ricky. Oh, yeah. yeah. What are you doing? So anyway, <laughs> so I take the thing. I did, I make bread out of it. How long does the bread take to to bake? So once you've combined everything, you would take like uh, 200 grams of that thing that was probably three or 400 grams. Throw the rest out, and you put that livened yeast with another thing of like. 400 flour and 400 water. So now that's going to be your baking thing mixed with the live yeasty. You make a ball and then you try to shape it in a way that's tight at the bottom, I guess. And then you just throw, throw it in a shaping bowl or any bowl uh-huh. in the fridge and then overnight or forget about it. You know, 24 hours. You can leave it in there 36 hours, honestly. It don't matter. Oh, it doesn't let, matter. It, let it just sit in there. Okay, yeah. And then you bring it out. And you put it in the best like heavy pot you got uh-huh. in the oven, like say 500, 550, I forget. Let's say 500. And the, the coolest thing is you put paper on the bottom and then you put the pot in there. So when you let the pot get hot, <laughs> you let the pot get hot and then you put the dough in there and then you grab water. And you put water in there, and the pan sizzles, and then you trap the steam in there. Oh, you trap it. You put some water in there, so it's kind of like steaming because the pot's sizzling. Uh huh. Put it in there, then you bake. So it's like a sweaty bake. Oh, it's a sweaty it's bake. It's a sweaty bake. Yeah, yeah. And then there's like salt in the recipe, too. That's probably like the only other flavor because you probably added some salt. You did add some salt for flavor. Yeah. And people get, that's basically it. And then you just bake it. And I don't know how long you bake it. You bake it for probably 20 minutes at 500. Then you would probably go down to like 425 or 450 if you wanted to. And then. Another 20 minutes, 25 minutes, and then you take it out of the pot. Yeah. Don't burn your hands. You better have oven mitts. Yeah, yeah, I'm not cr- Okay. I'm not saying you're crazy. No, I'm not. It's, <laughs> no, but I'm just saying that, of course, I would use oven, oven mitts. Do you own oven mitts? How many do we own, he baby? Does, and he does. Okay. And he burned himself just two days ago, not using <laughs> Did you really? Mitts. What? He came oh, my God. Isn't that him? ironic? Yeah. <laughs> did you not burn yourself? I did. <laughs> what were you making? And why? What didn't you use? Oven mitts. <laughs> but you didn't have to bring that in to the thing. That's relevant. I think that's relevant. You think it is? <laughs> to the conversation. <laughs> you think it's relevant to the yeah. conversation? Yeah, but you asked me if I own them. I do. I just don't know how to use them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't well, know when to use them. <laughs> <laughs> that's really? All. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, always. <laughs> oh, you use them all? <laughs> You use if you're using the write oven. This down, everyone, listen right now. No, if you're using the oven, you should always use <laughs> the oven mitt, and that's the lesson that we're trying to teach here. If you're baking, either use two towels or oven mitts, and don't that burn yourself. Also, no, no, no. The, I, 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 what I did was I took paper towels. Oh, God. no, no, no. But that's what I did. No, okay. I, I understand that you learn. There's you live trail. and you. Le- you live and you learn. You make mistakes and you go, oops, that didn't work. Now Can we get the through. pod holders, please? Can we please <laughs> get the pod holders out there? Do we need to demonstrate? Yeah, so basically what I had something uh, cooking in the, um, a, I had a, I, I, get, I get these little pies. So I got a little pie, put it in the oven, and um, I go, I don't know where the oven mitts are. I never what know kind of, can I ask you a question? Yeah. What kind of pie? I got him. It's a. It's a. No, it was a beef pie from um, Trader Joe's. It okay, was, nice. Yeah, he one loves of those. meat pies. I love meat pies. So, like beef and potato, or just does straight it matter? Up? I'm curious. <laughs> yeah. I mean, man, what the fuck does it matter? It's important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's a beef pie. I love meat pies. You know, I get them some panberry sometimes. I'll do. I'll go to Gold Belly right, and I'll yes. order like sixty pies from there. Yeah. Right. So anyway, I'm a pie guy. My brother is too, as well. Maybe it's a family trait. Well, no, it's a, it's like a, we were born in the '70s trait. Oh, you, are you just was that a, like a, a Absolutely. slam? Absolutely. Was that a slam? <laughs> yeah, that's a fact. I think that's probably the. Are you an ageist? I'm just. 
<laughs> right? I'm sorry I was born in the 70s. If I see one more fucking pot pie in that freezer, <laughs> I swear to God. All right. I grew up on pot pies too. A little Th- bit. Thank you. Thank you. But they're not a comfort for, for me anymore. But they were like the cheap thing that mom and dad would give us if they went out like to dinner somewhere. Did you? Were you sad when they left? No, we loved it because it was like this weird thing that was felt special, sort of. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So let's finish with the sourdough. <laughs> You take it out. You take it out after 40 <laughs> minutes of baking. With a fucking oven mitts. Minute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. And then you got to prop that dough that's really hot out, yeah. of the, out of the pan. Yeah. Use your oven mitts. <laughs> <laughs> Put it back on the rack raw, like nothing underneath it. Yeah. Okay. And then you bake it for... take. It what? Back. You got to keep baking it? Well, you want a nice... You already did it. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, okay. Why are you angry at him? I'm, 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 I'm sorry. I get angry. Because it'll make... The skin oh, yeah. and the crust That's right. of the sourdough. We want, it, we want it crusty. Respectful. How do you know sourdough is well, is correctly baked? Because of the crust. And the flavor. And it'll have that tang that's like the yeast. And it's cool. Yeah, it's yeah. cool. And I really got into it. Yeah. What about the tightness of the bread? I'm not great at that, but I didn't care after all because it tasted so delicious. Like, I'm not a, I'm an amateur baker. So, like, I was very forgiving because if it didn't, bake perfectly i would make croutons out of it mm-hmm. or sometimes because your sourdough things living you can make like sourdough waffles which is like bananas wow. wow clever that's just like leaving sourdough and like an egg or two overnight which seems crazy like oh i'm gonna get something infected yeah, yeah. i think maybe the eggs going in the morning i can't remember don't don't listen <laughs> to my don't recipe yeah, yeah. this isn't a, none of this is real yeah, is real no. do you watch the um great british bake-off I did for a while, yeah. I did for a while. That's our favorite, I, oh, that, show. That's our favorite It's show. very soothing, yeah. It's soothing. I think it's the most wholesome show I've ever seen. They, they never have a sourdough challenge, though. No, because they have to do all that living shit. Oh. Oh, you know what yeah. I mean? They got to get the mama, the, mama, the mama bird, you know what I mean, and bring it in. It's yeah. the whole thing, yeah. But um, I, I, also sourdough, just, I just want to throw in my two cents about sourdough in, in itself. It's probably my fifth favorite bread. Rank your breads. Oh, wow. Yeah. Rank your breads. Like styles? Yeah, what is your favorite bread? What's, a, what's, a, what's, a, what's above sourdough? Like, what's, what's the other four? If it's a fifth, what's the fourth? <laughs> what? I'll stop. I have to sit up I'll, here. Yeah. I'll t- is a baguette a. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's okay. a bread. It's a bread, right? I yeah. think number one is oxtail stew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, baguette would be number one for me. You know, focaccia. A focaccia is a good focaccia, bread. Focaccia, I like that. Uh-huh. It's Italian. Mm-hmm. There's, I like the little chunks of stuff in it. Mm-hmm. Right? There's always like onion Z's and stuff, right? Yeah. Am, I, am I getting that right? or what? Onion Z's. Thank you for saying the Z. <laughs> so many people forget to say the Z. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. So, And the third bread that I enjoy is I like, um, I like the um, English, the pudding bread. English pudding. Not, pudding bread. Like, like bread, bread pudding? Bread, bread pudding. Oh, that's bread pudding. So yeah, that's amazing, that's amazing right? Yeah. So am I getting it right? Do you, need, do you want raisins in that or no raisins? No raisins. No, okay. I don't raisins. Respect. No, no, no. Respect. Um, I like um, Cinnabon. Oh, I love yeah. Cinnabon. <laughs> Isn't that the dessert? <laughs> is Cinnabon a bread? You know what? It is. You know, I managed <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, a shop in a mall and I got like, I had too many Cinnabon for like a month and a half. <laughs> what do you mean? You I had, had to be like, a mo- when I didn't have work as an actor, like as a very young man, I'm very old now, uh, I had to like make my rent in you know months at a time before I like was full time comedy so in L A. No, this is Chicago, wow. way back. Mm. And a buddy of mine's mom had these like pop up shops where she'd open a Christmas shop because the mall doesn't want a store empty. And the Christmas shop was like crafts, things that would be in cases like this, but they were generally Christmas themed, and some were porcelain dolls. And you were probably in like an old Payless shoes. I forget what our mall shop was before that. Yeah, I happened to be the manager, and I wasn't great at it. Uh, but Cinnabon was my break mm-hmm. and uh-huh. I didn't have them every day, but they're, they're sort of addicting. Like they're really good. Yeah. They always deliver even except an airport Cinnabon occasionally undercooks it a little bit. Sure. And then also what the, a treat. the smell mm-hmm. probably fucked you up because yeah, you can probably amazing. smell it from your work, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Cause it was in the center of the court. Yeah. So they were like using their magic. Like if you're smelling cinnamon and sugar all day, what do you think you want? You think about that. Yeah. Yeah. My yeah. And they're deli- and with a little coffee? Forget that. My, come on. My mom. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> I know. Come on, man. Come on. Yeah. Come on. My mom stole someone's cinnamon right off the counter. Oh. What? Because you know how they give those tiny little <laughs> testers at the Glendale Gallery? Yeah. 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 
And well, there were testers, and then there was someone's whole order just yeah. hung, hanging out there. Right. And she just swiped somebody, and she just started eating. <laughs> <laughs> because, she, because she thought it was a tester. Well, I don't a know. A full tester. <laughs> and I remember thinking, Ma, that's not a tester. And she was like, Oh, and she was embarrassed. But then she just kept going and walking yeah, really fast dude. towards the parking yeah, lot. Yeah, dude. Yeah. That's what. It's got crack powers. Yeah. It really does. I, I mean, I haven't had one in years. Yeah. I really haven't. Honestly, got a Cinnabon. It could be, I don't know. It's been years, many, many years. You know what, fuck, you know, you know what fucks me up too? What? Wetzel pretzels. That's a great, that's My wife hurt. likes wetzel pretzels. They fuck me up. And the kids like wetzel pretzels. And I had a racist encounter. Well, then now we don't like them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I, 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 I was in Indiana. Right. Oh uh, well, and there I, you go. I had a racist encounter. So I was at the airport at the Indian. I don't know what the Indianapolis airport's call, called, but I was there, and um, I was waiting in line. Right. What are you laughing? Right. I'm waiting in line, and I'm like, I'm going. God, which one should I get? Should I get the jalapeno one with the thing and the cheese sauce, or well, the cinnamon one? Something savory? I don't know. And I, it was a long line, and then this white man. Cuts right in front of me, and the people behind the counter. I don't know why I'm standing for this, by the way. I like it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I like it. It was a choice, but there's no point. Is camera getting this? Yeah. Are you okay. getting this? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, my bad. All right. I don't know why I'm standing for this, right? So this white man cuts, and they go, Dr. Sullivan. Like they all oh, knew him. Man, Got yeah. it. And he goes, Excuse me, young man. To and I had you? to do a. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had to back up. Sorry, I'm, I don't know what's Dr. Right. Sullivan? He's on, he's on the clock. He had oh, to get he's out helping of there. people. He's like helping You're kids right. with yeah. cancer. Was it a pickup order or was no. he just cutting the line? He was cutting the line. He was cutting like, and also it's like, um, and he, I remember him taking a very long time. And here's the third thing. Did he know his order or was he like, uh, well. no, he was talking. How's the, you know, how's your sister, uh, Caprice? I don't know her name. <laughs> Caprice. <laughs> I just made up a name. Yeah, yeah. How's your sister Caprice? Caprice? You know what I mean? And she's like, very palette. cheesy. Yeah. Yeah. You, know I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? And so, and I remember going, I remember him taking so long that I did a sound. Uh oh. And then I left. What sound what? did you make? <laughs> right? Like, I wanted them to know. You're upset. Yeah, so I'm standing there, right? He's talking. And I remember just going, Caprice, man. Yeah, Caprice, Caprice. Caprice. Right? I was going, Caprice. <laughs> and I, I walked away, and then they there was no reaction, <laughs> right? And I just remember racist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, racism. That was a lose lose for you. Yeah, yeah. You could have walked out angry and with a Wetzel pretzel. Yeah, you white people don't. You guys never get. Here's the one thing that you guys. I finally wanted to talk to white people. This is good. <laughs> this is good for me too. Yeah, yeah. This is good for me too. Man, I want to tell you two whites here. <laughs> Back up for a sec, everyone. Right? <laughs> you guys never. You go through your lives. And you never experience weird racial situations, you know? And I, I think the younger generations, and I mean, the, yeah, the younger generation of Asians, you don't feel it as much. But when you, were, when you grew up during the 70s, like I did, you know, it was more prevalent, I believe. Try going to the Philippines. That's when you'll feel it. What? Everyone. He's a white guy, you're Joe. <laughs> they don't care about your oh, name. Yeah, They're yeah, like, yeah. hey, Joe. <laughs> But here in America, you guys don't get you you know witness like you know what I mean we're anyway. I'm not blaming you guys. You guys are just born who you are, and, and you guys are great people. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Talk to white America. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Talk to them. So I want to, Matt. Ma I also want to talk to you about like because I've always been intimidated by you. Oh no. Yeah, because um, right. you did start UCB with um, who was the core members in the beginning of UCB. Besser, Amy, Ian. Besser, Amy, and Ian. Yeah. And then how, how, just tell me, were you guys in Second City or did you start your own thing? We started our own thing that was around since the early 90s. That's amazing. Why, why, why did you start your own thing when Second City was there in Chicago? Because uh, everybody came out wanting to do their own thing and there was sort of this alt comedy reaction to Second City. And also there weren't, I don't know why. I guess I stumbled into comedy. My trajectory was trajectory was through improv. And so I didn't do a lot of theater. And then I stumbled into a place called The Annoyance. Mm. And The Annoyance had uh, these like kind of funny parody musicals. And I happened into a, and I didn't even, I don't really sing, but I stumbled into that. Yeah. And then I was doing UCB shows with like Besser and 
and then Ian and Amy, and then we moved to New York in like 96 and started a theater. And that's how it started. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. I mean, to create like, it's like, it reminds me of like Gary Austin with the Groundlings back in the late 60s. It's like, yeah. 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 It's like, because I knew Gary when he was an older, he's Mm -hmm. passed, but um, when I was a young kid, I used to take classes from Gary. And he started the Groundlings back in the late sixties or early seventies. I don't know when it was, but um, it, but it's you founded an institution. How does that? F- uh, did you walk around going, "I created that"? Or no? <laughs> no. <laughs> he, he tells people why, but it's cool. Thank you. Yeah, it is. I am proud of it. It's sure. so fucking cool. It's like when you go because uh, you are you are you still like on the board or uh, how does that work? I'm not on a board. Uh, there's the four of us that sort of run it, and then there's. Still, business people, not really anymore. We're not doing anything, so. But you still have your buildings and stuff, no? Nope, oh, nope. That's gone. What happened? Pandemic. Sold it. Wait, wait, wait! You had two buildings in L.A. They're gone now. We have a building on Franklin. That's our lease, so oh. we still have that. But you're We're not going to do it, it anymore. I don't know what's going to happen. Honestly, oh. that's, that's my truthful answer. Really? I don't know what's going to happen. Wow, that would be a shame, though, right? Because it's like, it's such a I mean, I even, I've done shows at the Franklin one. Mm-hmm. It's we used om- to live right by there. We used to live right. I, we still live on Beechwood, and it's just a, such a historic landmark almost for comedy. You guys got to keep it going, no? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no, Matt. If not just for you, yeah. Oh, just that's for very the- sweet. <laughs> oh, no, for comedy. <laughs> yeah, for comedy reasons. You uh, anyway. Let's move on. Then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, I just I just love doing shows there, and it's it's a huge thing. But um, you know um, but how how was the pandemic for you? Great question. Depressing. Uh, how was my pandemic? Yeah. Uh, I guess my pandemic was home with three kids. Oh. Um, uh, I started raising chickens. Mm, what kind? Right now, we currently have like. Mostly Rhode Island Reds and two Silkies, I Polish silkies. silkies. And those are the two roosters. Uh, so and what's, talk what's, about what's, an interesting... What's a Silkie? A Silkie is very... You'd love, you'd love a Silkie. They're very... Um, um, furry, fluffy. fluffy they're fluffy chickens. Wait, wait, wait. You're not, working, you're not moving fast enough, Gilb. What do you mean? Oh, you want to see... <laughs> sure. Wait, wait, so... Pull up a Silkie. Look at them. Look. Yeah. Whoa, dude. I've never even seen that. I they're thought fluffy. Those were... They're Whoa, kind of me- Impalas, well. they look like Impalas. <laughs> what's, what's an Impala? <laughs> <laughs> the, the car? <laughs> no, no, what's no, a, it's a, it's a, a, it's a... A llama? Llama, a llama. A llama. llama. Yeah. I think I knew you meant. <laughs> an Impala is <laughs> like is a, a gazelle, isn't it? I don't know. Yeah, pull up like an that. Impala. I think it's sort of like yeah, yeah. this, this it, very it, svelte well, it, looking... An Impala is an animal, right? An Impala is a very fast animal. Oh. Pull up an Impala. I'm pulling it up, yeah, I'm pulling it up. Okay. All right, <laughs> Yeah. All right. Okay. It's fine. <laughs> it, Completely it wrong animal. <laughs> <laughs> Completely wrong. All right. Go back to the fur fuzzies. All right. So those are real chickens. Mm-hmm. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. What kind of are, are they like? And they have fur on their legs, so that's what's kind of funny about so them. So cute. Oh, I grew so up with cute. chickens Did you? as pets. So my dad would bring them into oh. the living room and watch TV, and they would drop their wing and come. Really? Yeah. yeah. Really? I had Coco for eight years. Coco. Really? Yeah. Are these Did they shit on the floor? Um, we went to <laughs> <laughs> occasionally, but he yeah. was a white leghorn, so he was a very typical white with a big uh, red crown. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. But are they female or they're all they're that, both? He genders. has the roosters of the silkies. Yeah, we have the we have the rooster. Yeah, two yeah. of them. Wow. So you, you you just have them as pets. No, they live in a little rooster shack in the backyard. Wow. And there's seven of them. There's two roosters and five hens. And He didn't even know what a chicken was up until we went to Hawaii one time and we were walking past. Oh, and I was like, oh, look at these chickens, remember? And you're like, that's a chicken? <laughs> and it was Wait. the most basic looking chicken I'd ever seen. He's like, I'd never seen a chicken before. You, <laughs> remember that? I know, but when, uh, let me just say something. <laughs> when you see something live... <laughs> Right, like sometimes, like, let's just let me. Okay, sometimes, like when I first met Sinbad. <laughs> Wait, whoa! Just listen. Okay, this just, better be going. <laughs> this, this is gonna go somewhere. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, growing up, I would watch Sinbad on television, <coughs> right? And then when I met him live, right, 
I was he looked different. Like so, you know, mm-hmm. the TV version of mm-hmm. Sinbad, right? Mm-hmm. Looked different than the live version, version of, a Sinbad. of Sinbad. He he seemed more orange. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like Sinbad has an orange vo- glow about him on television. That's what you're saying. That this guy right here, right? Yeah. So when you see him like that, he has this uh, this orangey mm-hmm. glow, but maybe it's the. <laughs> Maybe it's his fucking goatee. I don't know what it is, right? It is his. He has a goat red, he has red hair. I'm not being racist. I don't know what you guys You're are laughing <laughs> about, right? Just right. I'm just saying, when I was watching, I go, well, look at this orange man. He's so funny, right? As a kid, right? And then when I met him live, in real life, I didn't even know who he was because he didn't look like that. Yeah. yeah. You, you mean? So it's like, that's the same thing as a chicken. As a chicken. <laughs> just hear me out. I get this. As a out. chicken, I've, I've never been on a farm before, Right. Right, and I've only looked at fucking chickens on, you know what I mean? Your plate. On the plate, yes, as well, right? But also in photographs or, you know what I mean? Cartoons. School, cartoons, school books, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. When they go, you know, they do song. I don't know what. Child. You're a city kid mostly or suburban kid? I'm a suburban kid. Suburban kid? I'm a suburban kid, right? <laughs> and in school, <laughs> it's suburban. And in school, when you were in elementary, they would do the songs like, I, I'm going to make it up. A cow goes, moo, moo. Mm. Chicken goes chicka, cluck a cluck, uh, right? Cluck a cluck a cluck, or whatever. And you go and you read the book and you go and you do this. But when, I've never seen one. So when we were in Hawaii and we saw one, I just go, "Oh, that's what it looks like." Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well. <sighs> Why are you sweating? I'm sweating because it's like you guys make make it seem I'm I'm dumb or something. I just there, there was a reason why I was so surprised to see the chicken. Anyway, I've. <laughs> <laughs> I've never re- seen your kind, those kind of chickens before. Yeah. Roman swipes. Sweetie, when you've been desperate and you've had, you've felt the need to last longer. What are th- what are the thoughts that come to mind when you're trying to last longer? In I'll bed? tell you the thoughts. Roman swipes. You guys, um, I think about baseball. I think about Gattaca. The movie. I think oh, about, so specific. I, I think about um, the brothers Mulligan. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I think about all. It was a movie. I think. Well, or, you guys don't have to do that. You didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Bobby no longer has to do this because nope. Roman, an online men's health company, are changing the game with Roman swipes. I, I love the them. The secret to longer lasting sex. They're the side of my bed, right? And they're little swipes. You 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 peel it open, right? Just put it right. And in when you get tail. erectile, mm. right? When you have the big girth, you swipe it God. on there, <laughs> yeah. right? My girth, you mm. swipe it on there, and you don't need to think about like weird things like Gattaca, mm. right? Oh, you can just be hard because you know what you put on your penis? What? R- Roman swipes. Roman swipes are a clinically proven way to last longer in bed. They're effective, easy to use, and fast acting, but don't require a prescription. And you know what I love best mm. is that you never have to worry about the it, the transference onto. Yeah, you. they will not transfer to your partner, so you can last longer without that worry. They're yeah. super easy to use. Just take the swipes out of the pot, packet, like Bobby said. Swipe yeah. it on, let it dry, and you're good to go. That's it. Go to getroman.com/slash belly. Get ten dollars off your first order of swipes plus free two day shipping. That's getroman.com/slash belly for ten dollars off your first order of swipes plus free two day shipping. Getroman.com/slash. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. <laughs> 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 Roman swipes. Better help. Mm. You guys, um, I don't do a fancy jingle for better help no. because it's a serious thing. Yeah. Right? Better help. This better? podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Yeah. Check out betterhelp.com slash belly for 10% off of your first month. Gee, golly, gee, life is full of stressors. Mm. It doesn't matter who you are, what you have, your life is probably really stressful. And you know, um, everyone in this room that's in here right now, we've all partaked in therapy and we all use BetterHelp. BetterHelp is a customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, in-person therapy, and you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. Mm-hmm. Unload the stressors and get some unbiased feedback. You'd be pretty surprised at what you might gain from it and see if it's for you. Honestly, it's been a game changer for our lives, and we couldn't be more thankful that BetterHelp is out there. Yeah. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and Tiger Belly listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash belly. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash belly for 10% off your first month. 
Yeah. What is the difference? Well, it's just a breed, and we went to a feed store somewhere in, I think, San Bernardino or whatever, and you can have five or six different choices of chicks, mm. and then you get them when they're, like, kind of this ah. big or whatever. Yeah. And then uh, put them in a tiny pen, and then eventually they lay eggs if you keep them live long enough. Mm-hmm. I, I, but are they, like, do they recognize you? I mean, I, I, I don't you know. What, they are interesting. They do have some personality, but it's so funny, like, we have two roosters now, and I raised them since they were babies. Like they were kind of pets. They do not care at all about me. Like they're so mean to me. Like they would, they would. This one always bites my ankle. Yeah. And, oh, then, wow. and the other one's always humping the poor hens. Like oh, never yeah. not mm. jumping on a hen. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. he's a hara- He's a serial harasser. Wow. Yeah. And so it's just like, and the funniest part too is like, there's an alpha rooster and a beta rest- rooster, and they never fight. Occasionally oh. they'll peck a little. But they grew up like brothers, and there was a time when we call them scrawny, uh, was the alpha when they were adolescents or young adults or something. And then at the, this point, the black one, uh, who the kids now call uh, Sir Pantaloons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. The Sir. And uh, he's the alpha. Yeah, that's where the word mm. pecking order comes from. Yeah. Or the term pecking order. That's, I learn something new every day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The pecking order comes from the chicken. Mm-hmm. D- d- Depending uh, on how high they are on the, on, in that the pecking, pecking order. order. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, in their in their in, in their enclosure even. Oh, I see. Yeah. So there's always one dominant. Yeah, like for a while we had, Scrawny would sleep underneath uh, Sir Panaloons and this other female hen Fraser. So there was at one point there was only like three, and two were males. And the, the beta guy would sleep downstairs, and he would even get pooped on at night. <laughs> like, oh wow! Oh, you know what I mean? But yeah. that's their culture. Wow. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and then some, or they're like they're interesting. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. fascinating because you are you're getting they are pets, so you're seeing like how they establish their pecking order, and then like in the morning sometimes, uh, the black one would chase scrawny around. Oh. You know? Yeah, yeah. And uh, so so you do see that, but the roosters don't. Once they're like adults, they're kind of mean, and the kids love to get them to chase them through the yard. Wow. It's kind of it's funny nice. to see a rooster chase you. But it's like that in every species, is it not, or no? Isn't there mean? a pecking order in every species? Even yeah, in, even sure, in sure. humans. Sure. Like if we look at the like the, the uh, podcast world, mm-hmm. Joe Rogan would probably be the top, mm. right? And I'm like... Probably- I love it. Give me your... Give me your ranking of the most powerful podcasts right now. Your pecking order. My your pecking, pecking order. order. The top, the top, whatever, whatever. And you don't think be that political is. about it. I'm not gonna be political. Think... I'm just gonna sweat because I don't want to ruffle any feathers. I don't think you're doing that. You don't have to do it. <laughs> I don't know, is that what's that from? I don't want to ruffle any feathers. I think Chickens. That's a chicken, chicken reference. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Exactly. <laughs> right. So, um, here's my. In I, I, all I know is comedy. Are you ranking by m- money that they're making? No, no, no. Or? I'm just in terms of how I would be amongst them sure. how i would act oh. you know what i mean like when matt came in here when he like i don't really greet people out and out there when you came in because i just respect you so it's like you know i mean i guess you're above the pecking order in terms of how i feel about does it does he shit on your head when you sleep? he would never shit on no. my head he's one of those no. guys that's not well we're, we're not chickens so we have a different way of like <laughs> shitting on each other <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 there is a different way of doing it they blow off your podcast <laughs> If they want to shit on your head, yeah, they yeah. blow off your podcast. Yeah, like Tim Dillon. Whoa. Oh, he, did, yeah, yeah. he did shit on twice. your head. Twice. Whoa, whoa. He shit on my head twice. And I want you to hear that. <laughs> because you canceled twice. <laughs> Who else canceled? Uh, nobody cancels on us recently. I know, but in the, over these history. Tim Dillon. That's it? That's yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. That's pretty no, good. Oh, no, there was another one. The Fighter. Oh yeah, Sugar uh, Sean. Sugar, Sugar Sean, Sean O'Malley. But that's because he was he got he partied too hard the night before. Well, he was a young guy. Here's a here's a scenario I'm going through. I'm I'm gonna have to do a job in Montreal, all right? Uh-huh. For like a week. And I had a podcast scheduled during that week. And of course I have to take the job. You know, it's it's good work and but I wanna contact the person whose podcast that is and write a personal note. Instead of just having like my I guess my publicist booked it or whatever, I wanna make sure that they know that I'm not a jerk because I mm. get it. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it does happen. Mm-hmm. But you have to like, you have to be good about that because you don't really want to hurt people's feelings that way. Yeah. 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 People right. get, you know, I mean, we're, we're okay. Cause we, if, if, if like, if you had canceled, which would, would have bummed me out, but 
we would have just done it, you know what I mean, without yeah. you, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, yeah. but, like, we can move on, but... And to be fair, Sugar Sean did write a personal email saying... I never really read it. Sorry. I never read it. I read it. Okay. So well, I next time share that for with him. Me. I can vouch <laughs> for him. He, he felt really bad. He, did he really? Yeah, he felt really bad. All right, well, then, sorry, Sugar. You didn't poo on me. But <laughs> let's go... On your head. Just on, on my, your head. On my head. I on my head. Yeah. But so here, in terms of... Can I get a water? This is like... <laughs> Are you being real? Yeah. Yeah, give him another water. Here, have, take him... Give him mine. I didn't open it. Yeah, yeah. I like hey, you it. drink a lot of water, man. I'm trying to be healthy. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I'm trying. So, um, in in the comedy world, I would say Joe Rogan is the top dog, mm-hmm. and the reason being is because when you're around him, he does have this, you know, alpha e status vibe about. It. He's like, you know, he's, hey, you know, what I mean, he's like one of those guys that'll. You know what I mean? you? Elbow your neck when he gives you a hug, you know what I mean? And you go, hey, you know, that, that type of thing. And then, but then you have this second one, which is more of a sensitive one, which is Mark Maron, I would believe, in terms of how I would view it, would be probably, he'll be so angry if I say this. Second. <laughs> oh, tell him to the yeah, camera. Yeah, yeah. Even though I'm doing a show with him next week, <laughs> hopefully he doesn't hear. But they're close. I don't. Do you think he listens to your podcast? No. Or somebody might tell him. Somebody might tell him. Somebody might tell him. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Yeah, 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 you're right. But um, I think they're... Can they share number one? Sure, yes. They even rank it. Yes. Yeah, because in the chicken world, right? Oh, this is good. (laughs) (laughs) You're tying it back to chickens. Right, right, right. So in the chicken world, right, you probably have... If you have two pens, Mm -hmm. right... But they, they're on the same ranch or farm. Mm-hmm. Would they? Would there be two pens? Do you think on a farm, technically? Two pens. Two two different areas sure. where chickens sure. hang, sure. right? Mm-hmm. So maybe you know that's what, it's like one pen is you know because the Joe Rogan you know what I mean podcast you know what I mean umbrella is a certain type of like I would say that like you know what I mean maybe we would fall under that category right. Do you think, or like Tom Segura, Burt Kreischer, mm-hmm. and then the Mark Marin umbrella? Some other types of podcasts would fall under that type mm-hmm. of umbrella, like mm-hmm. the Doughboys or whatever, yeah, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So, um, I, am I, so I think those are the top dogs in terms of how I view it. I'm sure there are there are also celebrities doing. Would you just fart? <laughs> no, it was a table. Uh, there are also. Ce- I wouldn't mind if you did. Okay. It can't. But so, and then I think that um, everything else also falls under that. I see. <laughs> no, that really fizzled out. Buzz huh? podcast pecking <laughs> order by Bobby Lee. <laughs> Great segment. <laughs> <laughs> it just fizzled. <laughs> that thing fucking fizzled the fuck out. Right. <laughs> you made eye contact with everyone in the room during that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it, because I just don't know what even that means. I, I mean, you, yeah, yeah, I made my point. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, I get it. I always tell Mark all the time. I go. I always look at him and I go, thanks for doing the, your podcast. And he goes, why? He's always grumpy. And he, I, I go, because <laughs> he's always grumpy. he goes grumpy towards me. Because it showed us a way, you know what I mean, to make a living. Do, just, we never thought that that would be an option, you know? And don't, you, don't you love podcasting? Well, I do so far. I'm back at, Yeah, I'm back doing it again. Yeah, yeah I yeah. do. I mean, so far... Uh, I like it for the deadline too. I like that it forces you to be creative on a schedule and like, and it's always usually fun. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Are you having fun today or? Yeah. <laughs> you no, about I, it. You I want you to. I want you to be having fun. So so far we've gotten to sourdough and chickens. What's another thing during the pandemic? That uh, we did, or my my wife. Yeah, you know, these are all like activity things. But my wife painted or taped. Uh, a pickleball court in our driveway. So we've been playing oh. pickleball. Pickleball. Do you know what pickleball is? I don't even know what that it's is. It's like ping pong tennis, basically. Mm-hmm. I just learned about pickleball. Okay, what is pickleball? It's a small net, smaller net than a tennis court, obviously, and then shorter, narrower court. And the paddles are like ping pong paddles, but they're a little bigger. They're I'm flat. Really good at it. And the ball, it's fun too. You'll like it. The ball is like a wiffle ball with holes in it, and it bounces on concrete pretty well, but. You get the rhythm. It's like, and it's fun because it gets fast like ping pong. Like you can like really. He's really good at. Oh, you might be really good at pickle. Yeah, uh, I might. You might be be really good. Yeah, and you'll like it because it's exercise too. Uh, Okay, Uh, (laughs) I like it for exercise. (laughs) I'm old. 
Yeah, I love exercising. Yeah. <laughs> um, is there a serve? Yeah, you have to serve underhand below the hip. Oh, you can't just slam it. Down. No. Oh, okay. And then the other thing is there's a kitchen, which I'm not going to get into, but the kitchen. No, kitchen's... I want. No, I need to. I need. Yeah, oh, this is pickleball. Yeah, that area that's so the blue, blue. What's the blue? The kitchen. That's the kitchen. And that's where you generally. Can't go in there unless the ball bounces in there. Oh. Look, at, look, 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 where, look where it ends up. Cassie and they all, Kimmich everybody started. Yeah, everybody started. On the back line. Watch it again. Like, Yo, let's see if we can yeah, see their serve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch These guys again. must be really good. Yeah, they look like I'm them. terrible, but it's a fun... Let's see. Right. Oh. So he's serving on this side. And then he moves over to that side for whatever reason. So once you're in the kitchen... Oh, the blue, right? Okay. It keeps you from, like, hanging out at the net. Uh, ah. So you can't slam it down. Yeah, you can't That's block it. That's interesting. And so that... And if you notice, like, right after the serve, they run to the kitchen, but you have to return one bounce, so these guys can't charge the net until they've returned one bounce, if that makes sense. Yes. Yes. That's interesting. And these are people watching, so it maybe it'll catch on. Do you think? I mean, it has, a million, it has a million views streamed live. Right. So, yeah. Is pickleball a new thing, or is well, it like... Here's why it's your sport. You're good at tennis, you're good at, at ping pong. This is like the I was on marriage. the tennis team in high school, uh -huh. yeah. and I'm pretty good at ping pong, although I'm not as good as Judah Friedlander yeah. or um, Frank Calendo. They're good at ping pong? Bro. Frank, you know Frank Caliendo? Mm -hmm. Frank Caliendo, you, when you look at him, you go, look, he looks like, he's shaped like that little boy from Up. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Asian boy from Up, yeah. I mean, that's what he's shaped like. Like, this is kind of like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like cartoon, cartoony, mm -hmm. right? It's like, how does this guy even walk? It's like, you know, he just, you know, wobbles. Mm -hmm. oh, he's going to be so mad when he, because I, th again, a comic was going to tell him I say that. <laughs> and he's going to fucking text me. What the fuck, right? But here's the compliment. You think he, I remember the first time I ever played at Mad TV when we were on Mad TV together. They had a ping pong um, um, table mm -hmm. by the writers' op offices, and as soon as it, as soon as I served at one time, I just knew, oh, this is next level. He's a spinner, oh. and his dad's a grandmaster. Oh, oh and he come grew, on! He grew Jeez. up with it, so. He would beat me like twenty-one to one. Mm -mm. Yeah, that's how good he was. Wow, <laughs> and then that's not fun. I've never faced anyone that good. You haven't? I've only played in like family picnic kind of <laughs> yeah, yeah, or basements. You know, friends' basements. Yeah, or those, whatever. Those are fun. I like those duels. You know what I mean? That you would have. Mm -hmm. But when you play with somebody that's like a spinner, like he'll do one spin, like Olympic stuff. Yeah, and, and so it'll hit the thing. And it'll go doing. You think it's going this way? Uh, that's my ping pong noise. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, doing right. It'll go that way. You mm -hmm, know what I mean. Mm -hmm. And then it's gone, and then you lost the point. You mm -hmm. know. But yeah, those guys are, and they're also shaped the same. I don't know why. I do, why do I talk about people's it's shape? shape? <laughs> You're very. I gotta very stop that, huh? What do you think? When I describe people, like if I describe. Well, speaking of chicken, you're kind of shaped like a rotisserie chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Thoughts. Um. What have been? What have I been doing every night? On the Peloton. That's right. I've been forty-five minutes on the Peloton because oh, I don't want to die. Because Matt, I just turned fifty. You look good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, were you depressed during? When, I don't know if you're. I'm making an assumption that you <laughs> did turn fifty at one point. You could be. I young. don't know that it was a big one. My wife, God bless her, threw me a surprise party, a big one, and she was very sweet. That's what she did. Oh, that's very sweet. Like. It's very thoughtful. Yeah. I was very touched by that, and she got a lot of people out there to Baltimore. Whoa, whoa, no. Re so you yeah, when I was working, it was in the middle of our season. Oh, wow. It was really nice, though. It was fun. So you were on Veep. Yeah. And she did a surprise party where people flew in? Yeah. <laughs> wow. For my 50th. That's fucking... And so you were completely surprised? Like the dumbest man in the history of mankind. <laughs> wow. Like... Apparently, people were like, my brothers, my siblings flew in, and my mom flew in, and like buddies from high school who I hadn't oh. seen in years. Whoa. I keep in touch with them, but we hadn't gotten together in a, right. in a while. But also, like, why would they come out to Baltimore? You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, how did it happen? So, did you did you know that she was she was she was in? coming out to Baltimore to right. visit me, and it was the weekend that uh, I think it all. I don't know. Yeah, it was the weekend. Of my birthday, it happened to probably land on a Saturday or something like that. And so she was out just to hang with me. And then we were going to go to a dinner. And then she had to be like, 
no, let's not make, because I was making reservations. Like I'm like, you know what we should do, Morgan? We should have like a Friday night dinner and you should meet some of the Veep cast. Because it was still kind of new or like some people were in town and right. you bonded with the actors. And she's best friends with all the wives, Veep wives and stuff like that too. And uh, she's like, no, no. She had to like cancel plans and then she had to like have someone cancel it in a back row way. So I made a reservation, at a, I, I forget the name, for like 10 people, let's say. Yeah. And I was celebrating my birthday, but I was also celebrating Morgan coming out. You know, it was like a Friday night. And then she had to back channel through Alex, this woman who worked there, and then she called the restaurant and said, if this guy Walsh, he's not coming, but if somebody for Walsh calls, just say yes, sir. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> <Just, just, laughs> yeah, yeah. I changed the number. I literally called back there and they said like, yes, sir, okay, fine whatever wow do you know what i mean yeah so there was like subterfuge that kept everything quiet wow yeah and so when you came in for the how many people showed up i walked in and there was like 50 people there wow. wow. and it was like family friends and i have a big family and all my siblings came out except for my one brother did you cry i did i probably cried yeah 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 I, I i when you surprised me three weeks ago i almost cried did you feel it though? <laughs> yeah, did you feel his tears? Because I, I remember going, I feel like crying. Mm -hmm. And then thinking, why why aren't tears coming out? Mm -hmm. And then the third thought was, you better force it out because now she's gonna think that you're not grateful or whatever. Oh my goodness. So I go through the <laughs> What a performer. I go through like this, this mental thing. But I have to say, have I said this before on this podcast? I think you have, yeah. yeah. I'll say one last time. Mm -hmm. Um that was probably one of the greatest nights of my life. I'm glad. And that was really nice. Mm -hmm. That whole night was magical, you know? So, um, do, do you have fears of dying? <laughs> Beautiful transition. <laughs> no, because that's what I, that's the thing that I've been thinking. I guess thinking. we all do, sure. I mean, it's a limited amount of life uh, we get, so sure. I mean, I don't live in fear of it. I try to, I don't know, distract myself with other things. Yeah. And I'm... Um, but 50 you know, was a big one for me. It was just like, well, I don't know why, but as soon as I turned 50, I was like, then I started thinking about it. It was like, maybe because I know that my dad had his first stroke at 62, mm -hmm. right? And then also, I think Norm passing away too at 62, mm -hmm. right? Had a lot to do with it, but I don't know. I just, it's not like I dwell on it, but it's just like now it's a thing and it's like. You're just due for a colonoscopy and you're having feelings. That's what I'm trying to get one? up to. Have you had one? I haven't had one in a long time, but yeah, I've had them. You're due at 50. It's time to get probed. Can you set one up for me? Yes. Yeah, that's it like my statistics. Pleasure. Yeah, <laughs> just do statistics. But that's, yeah, and also you're being, you're, sounds like you're exercising on your Peloton. Those are all good things. Yeah. Because like, it's all quality of life at some point. You just want to like be that's what active, have fun, be able to play pickle. Yeah. You know? Play pickle. That's what you need to be doing. Okay. I, I, before we go to this, though, I want to ask him one last question about... Um, Where are we going? What's happening? Well, at the end, we do a thing, but okay. I'll tell you what it is. But okay. um, Because I know you have three kids, and I've... Did you have kids later in life? I guess so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And is it like... Is it what people say it is like? Like, oh, you, it's, a, it's a life experience that you can't miss and whatnot, or... Because I don't I, have I don't any. know that I'd... You can't miss. I mean, I think it's the best thing in my life by far. Like 100%. Like that's a, it. That's a, what a million percent. And I try to, you know, be a good dad. And uh, Morgan is amazing. I'm very lucky. And uh, I don't know. We'll see if they're not too screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I mean, they're good kids. We're actually very fortunate. My oldest kid's very sweet. And they're all very sweet. Middle person also. Yeah. They're all great. Are they funny? Emmy is. Oh, Emmy is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They are. That's his pronoun, they. They are. Yeah. Sorry, they are. That's okay. No, I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. I'm learning it, too. I'm yeah, learning yeah, yeah, it, yeah. too. I'm they they it are, too. yeah. Yeah. Because I, I was always wondering if I ever had a kid, would I go, nah, there's the comedian. Mm. Yeah. Would that make you prouder and like the other one scared. less? I think I would be scared. Mm. Because of the life. Mm. You know? I mean, it, you have to admit, it was hard. This, this business. Sure. It's painful. You all, yes, it is. Yeah. It is. Also, like, I find stand-up particularly punishing. I think acting you can hide a little more, but I find, like, stand-up is a very exposing, punishing art form. That like, is pretty it's, punishing, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you're alone on the road, and it didn't go well, and, like, I did stand-up for a little bit, and it's it's a tough, 
It's a tough one. Yeah, yeah. But I find, you know, because I'm acting a little bit right now, too. Yeah. And I, I, mean, find, yeah. I find it to be difficult at times. Do you find it difficult or easy? I'm better at acting than stand Oh, you are? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, you, of course you are. Yeah, you're great. <laughs> no, but I was just saying. No, but what I was saying is, is I understand that. But not, no, I'm not saying the actual performance part. But how you feel, like I get stressed out. Do you ever get stressed out? Like, let's just say you have a big sure. scene. You have a yeah, big scene yeah, 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 yeah. with a lot of weird lines, and you know, you, you have to, you know, play it a specific way, right? Yeah, like I the, guess sure. I mean, of course, I get scared. I get, I get scared, like in moments like the the classic is like if you have a big monologue or a big chunk or big action sequence or whatever you just want to get it right so you're yeah. a little nervous and then you also just never want to get in the spiral where you're like i can't believe i'm messing this up like oh uh, yeah you just want to like be ready to i've done that where it was like for, like a, a line is so difficult for some reason i get trapped in it you know and then it's like i just start keep thinking about it and then when i say it it just comes out weird, and then like, and then you get in this head fuck. Anyway, it's probably just me. Maybe I need therapy. <laughs> you do. Well, need I therapy. think that is not uncommon between actors. I don't think that's uncommon. I think there are moments like everybody watches in a show or a performance where you're like, eh, I never did get that goddamn thing right. Mm. Like you kind of. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. A little bit, yeah, a little yeah. bit. I mean, and and you do also like try to. I don't know for for comedy. I think it's easy. Like hopefully. When you get hired, like I get hired, there's there's generally like uh, invitation to like be yourself or like do what you do well. Yeah. So you like, but you always like, or you know, if you're like somehow creating it, then you can help bring other people that make you feel great. Oh, you know wow. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. So what I've been doing now though, and great writing always helps in acting. Obviously, like if you have great writing, that's yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah. I also can take. I I'm getting to the point where I can now take risks where it's like. I'll go, you know what, I'm just going to throw this out there. Mm. Whereas before when I was younger, I, w I was just too scared to do it. But now it's like, you know, at the second pass, I'll just improvise a couple of things. And generally they like it. And they'll go, keep going. But before, I would be too afraid to even do, like go outside, you know what I mean, the box, you know? Mm -hmm. you know? It's anyway. true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get more confident. Mm. Anyway, at the end of our podcast, we do a thing called unhelpful advice. And we have a lot of people with, emails who ask us um pr they have problems in their lives okay and we try to answer them but sincerely or not okay however, i'll whatever. follow your lead <laughs> whatever. it's your show it's your show <laughs> yeah yeah hopefully it's a bread question oh my god i just noticed your brody that's cool i know yeah okay. yeah unhelpful advice wait like, but i'm gonna oh. say goodbye goodbye brody i love you you're, you're doing you're doing that uh, uh, yeah i love star trek you know mm -hmm. that oh are you a trekkie <laughs> no i'm not Damn it. <laughs> I thought we were going to. No. <laughs> Why? I can't go deep on Star Trek. Yeah, yeah. Are you a Star Wars? A little bit. I'm, I don't know. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like Star Wars, yeah. Yeah. You prefer Star Wars over Treks? Prefer. Jeepers. Yeah. Like, if I had to live in a world where Star Wars never existed or if Star Trek never Yeah, existed? yeah, yeah. Jeepers, that's a tough question. Uh, I guess I'd probably... I don't know. It's a good question. I mean... I guess I have to go with Han Solo. I need a world with Han Solo. Mm. So, <sighs> me too. I guess. Go ahead. No. Well, you. <laughs> I'm. I, listen, listen. Okay. I thought you were a Trekkie. I, I, I'm a Trekkie. You so bailed. I know. I know. I, I know. I, because I, because <laughs> I want you to feel good about your you answer. You be yourself. Right, what right, is your fine, real fuck, opinion? My real opinion is this. All right. That the the, the message and um, in Star Trek, I prefer it. You know I mean, oh, it's a much smarter show. It's too. A, yeah. I think it's also, yeah, I agree. The World Federation of it all, like, yeah, to me, and the I ethics, like that. The ethics of yes, it, I like. It's beautiful, yeah. And it's a vision of the future because it involves us as a people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, it's an I, I, ideal that I want to strive for. Yeah. Right? A, a, a place where there's no money, monetary money, and economics, and mm. that we're all striving to learn. And to help, but you're just so you know, you're the first person who's ever asked me to corner myself between Star Trek and Star Wars. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have so many other facets to who I am. Yeah, yeah, I apologize. <laughs> Go ahead. Unhopeful advice with Bobby Kalila and Matt Walsh. 
Uh, hey guys, I hope you guys are doing well. My name is G. I am a 14 year old half Greek, half Australian boy from Melbourne, Australia. To be honest, I am a 5'9 and 230 pounds, fat and have stretch marks on my thighs, hips, and arms. And I'm super self conscious, at times, hate myself for being so fat and quiet and nervous to talk to people and make friends, especially now that my close friends are making friends with new people and we aren't close anymore like we once were as brothers. I wonder if I'll ever meet a girl or a real friend who will like me uh, who will like me the way I am. By the way, I love your podcast and it means a lot to me. My name is G. That is so sweet. Uh, that is so this sweet. is him right here. Oh, you have a photo? He's oh, good. he's young, well, huh? How old is he? He's uh, 14. 14. And the answer is yes, you absolutely will. You will find your people. You will find the love that you and the friendships. All of those things. Yes, yes, yes. I can't even give like a horrible. I mean, I just that because I just feel like at fourteen. You put the picture away, Gil. Yeah, he's fourteen. Yeah, at <laughs> yeah. At, his name is G. At fourteen, G. I was questioning everything. I was mm -hmm. so depressed. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what I wanted to do for. A living. I didn't know. I was getting terrible grades in school. I was an outcast in my family. You know what I mean? I couldn't. N women hated me. It got to the point where I did other sexual things that we've talked about. You know what I mean? Right. And I was just lost. And that's when I went through. I went to three rehabs in that time period. Right. And um, they thought I was just like a clinically just, you know what I mean? Doomed. Mm. People, I mean, my parents, everyone thought I was doomed. I was so dark and, depre and depressed all the time. And just, um, it's just a terrible time. And I just want to, I relate to you, dude. And I want to say that I'm, t I promise you, it gets so much better w once you get out of high school, I think. Hold out. 14 is when I started therapy. Yeah. And it changed my life. Matt? Yeah, you're 14. So... You're going to be fine. Yeah. Your friend groups change. If you want a friend, try to be a friend. You know, you got to be active a little bit. You got to take, it's hard to, every, and the other, yeah, it's hard to expose yourself to try to become a friend. And it's also good to know that you're not the only one feeling this. Like, believe it or not, everybody else is probably feeling the same thing, but yeah. nobody talks about it. So take that too. And also, I want to say, G. You know, if I was walking down the street and we, we, we ever ran into each other, mm -hmm. right, I'd give you a hug and we're friends. Mm -hmm. I, I, out of this podcast, I learned so much information. Mm. I've learned about pecking orders. <laughs> I've learned about sourdoughs. Mm -hmm. I really have. We usually talk about the same things every week. But this, ep this episode, we covered, we covered territory that we've never covered before. Oh, mm -hmm. much that, like Star Trek. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Aside from the fact that it's nothing like Star Trek, <laughs> new territories. Mm -hmm. That's right, new land, frontier. Yeah, yeah, frontier. Thank, thank, thank you, sorry. G, for writing it. Thank you so that was much. Very sweet. Yeah, you're gonna be fine. You're gonna be fine, G. Um, so Matt, hopefully you um, do more podcasting and um, meaning I didn't do a good job here. You like I'm rusty. <laughs> you fucking. <laughs> He needs to work on. <laughs> hopefully you do a few. Hopefully you do a few more of these, Matt. You know, like Matt. Just, just Matt, you know. Matt, you fucking killed it. <laughs> it's good. Right? No, it was a vibe that we've never had before on this. Podcast. We loved it. Good. It was fucking amazing. And thank good. you so much. Thank you for having me. Um. So Matt, what? Well, check him out on the new Veep. What's it called again? The new frontier. What's it? The, the new, new frontier. frontier. <laughs> the new frontier. <laughs> Veep rewatch. The Veep rewatch. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm a, I started a podcast with Tim Simons. It's a Veep rewatch. We're going to go through all. All right. All seasons, all episodes, and uh, it just dropped today. And it's called Second in Command because Second Command. That was actually the name of our signs too when we would park. Uh -huh. You know how they have the location parking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. always say Second in Command. What a fucking uh, eight years you were on. How long were you on that show? Seven seasons. Oh my god! Over that's like ten or eleven years. That's fucking amazing. That's amazing. Crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's insane, dude. Yeah. And the type of talent that's on it, and the and the and the vibe it has, like in terms of like okay. the respect on it. Oh, look well, at there, there you it is. go. Second command. Yeah. Look. We worked on that graphic. We made some, you know, decisions. Uh, I don't know. 
I think it's not bad, right? What do you guys think of the I, graphic? We, I love Did it. You do a good job. Yeah, yeah. All right, good. It's amazing. I'm happy then. Anyway, um, Matt, um, you can. You're always welcome back. I'll come okay? back. Okay, and yeah. uh, we love you. Give him a round of applause, Woo! Matt Walsh. Everybody. Yo, what's going on, everybody? My name's Devin, and I'm singing the Tiger Belly theme song this week. If you like what you hear, please add me on Instagram at Devin Demicio and add me on Spotify and Apple Music as Devin Dean. Thank you so much.